Hey guys, welcome back to another After Effects video. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this Vox animation. And this is actually a combination of a few different Vox effects that I've tied into this one video. So this might be a lot more useful for you if you're not recreating this exact effect. You'll be able to pick up a few different techniques that are used in various Vox videos. Also a quick reminder that this same time next week, I'll also be releasing my travel effects Pro course along with my very first cinematic video. Now, if you're interested in following the development of that up until release, then you can check out my Instagram profile via the link in the description. And I've been posting a bunch of stuff behind the scenes, but I'm gonna release all of that on May 30th. So over in After Effects, this is the effect that we're gonna be creating or the animation. And I'm gonna break it down into a few different parts. Now, what I want to do first is I'm just gonna start by creating a new composition here. And I want this to be 1920 by 1080. And this is gonna be my main comp, just so we've got a starting point to work with. Now, your settings can be whatever you like, but here, what I want to do is I wanna start with the background. So what I did was I created a solid here and I just created something around this sort of dark sort of color, something like that. Now you'll notice here in the background of this layer that I have this sort of animation with all these different lines going on. Now, if you look closely on there, there's actually two different elements going on. One is a crumpled paper effect, which I've put over the background. And the second is that line animation. And these do two things. The first is just the paper kind of goes with the whole theme that I've created here. Yeah. And the other thing is with the lines, it kind of goes with the topography sort of uh, landscape that I've got going on in my main focus of my video. It kind of adds that element of interest into the background. Now this is the line image that I have here and that I've used for the background. And this is the paper clip that I'm also using for the background. Now both of these, you could recreate this. So you could take a photo of a paper background and then you could incorporate that into your uh, animation. And you could also do the same here. You could basically draw a series of lines. You could start a composition and with your pen tool, you could literally just draw lines and add the stroke effect to that and then basically have you know different width lines going around to create this sort of effect. Now that would take you quite some time to do that. Now what I did, which is a much easier way, was I used Envato Elements, which is the sponsor of this video, and they have just thousands, even tens of thousands of these sort of assets. So personally, I've been using Envato Elements for a while now, and this is exactly why, because for one low monthly fee, you can download all of these assets an unlimited amount of times. Now, this is the exact background that I used, and they've got hundreds of these uh, paper textured backgrounds. But basically, all I did was I just grabbed this paper background and just dragged it straight over the top of that background layer and just scaled this down. Then all I did with that is I just hit T on the keyboard and scaled this down to around sort of 45% and it gives us, you know, that nice sort of textured look on our background just makes it much more interesting. Now for the lines, what I did was I also just dragged this on top of that paper layer and I can just scale this down or even scale it up depending on what you're going for. And for this, I hit T on the keyboard and I dragged this down to around sort of 10%. So something very subtle there in the background. Now the lines themselves, I also got from Envato Elements and this is where I got them from this specific pack here. And basically this has a whole bunch of these line animations or images already included in the different, uh, in the one pack. And there's lots of these different style of packs that you can use. But basically I just incorporated this in because I think it goes really well with this topography style theme. And that's something that Vox obviously try and do and something that I also talk about in my animation master course. There's also a link for that in the description, but I talk a lot about you know using different elements to try and make all of this stuff sort of match, try and create a common theme. Now for the middle part, what I did here was I created this map style animation, which kind of starts with this animation like this, 
and then it moves into this landscape sort of put over the top. Now, the way I did this was I also created a new composition. I just called this one whatever you like. I'm just gonna call mine map. And then I've got a blank template to work with. Now I'm just gonna right click and create a new solid here. You want it to be a little bit lighter than what you had as the background, but just something maybe like that just kind of gives it a nice sort of a theme and a starting point to work with. And over the top of that, I added these lines which kind of made it look like a topography style. So something to do with maps and sort of the layout showing the different heights in terrain. So I drag this over the top of that layer and then I can just scale this up or down depending on you know how much detail I want or how close I want it to be to the camera. I can even just rotate this around to kind of position it something like that. Now also got this from Envato Elements by just searching topographic map and it kind of comes up with all of these different really cool images that you can basically just incorporate, which are perfect for this sort of thing. So I'm going obviously for that same sort of look. So I just grab any number of these and they just come as a downloadable kit. And most of them come as like a PNG or something like that that you can just drag and drop straight into your animation. And the great thing is once you've got it in there, you can just manipulate them any way you want. So if you went up to the fill, you could add like a fill color and just change the color if you wanted to. Obviously I'm going with that blue sort of theme. So I'm happy to kind of leave that where it is. The great thing is you can download any of these thousands of different graphics available here in Envato elements and it's all included in one low monthly subscription and you have unlimited downloads now as I said it's something that I've personally been using just for how good a value this really is now if you're also interested in checking out Envato elements then you can use the special link in the description below to get 50% off an annual subscription now what I did here in my original was I had that layer sort of fading on because I wanted to have like that cross section of the layers sort of animating on and off. So what I did was I basically created a mask line that went over these sort of lines like this. So just kind of tracing over this. So I've ended up with this sort of mask line like that. Then over the top, what I can do is I can add the stroke effect to that. And I can just scale this up so it kind of fills those different lines. And then I want it to reveal the original image here. Then what I can do is I can basically scale down the end part here, create a keyframe, move along on my timeline and then animate this forward. So basically what that's going to do is if I just turn that off, it's basically going to reveal that line animation. If it's not fully covering the edges of one of those things, you can just scale that up to kind of remove part of that. So I've kind of got that animation and that's looking pretty good. Now I want to basically copy that into the background and remove that stroke animation. So what I do is I duplicate that layer in the background and with that stroke layer, I can just remove that. And then what I want to do is maybe around here, I just want to hit T and create an opacity animation. And I can basically just drag this to zero. So as then that sort of animates on, I can then have this in the background fading on. Now that's gonna come into effect when we start putting this layer into our other main comp. Over the top, I then wanted to have that reveal of the map like I had here. So what I did was I basically just got a, an image of a map and you can get this off Google or Bing Maps where however you want. And I basically just put it here on my screen. And what I did to that layer was I basically drew a mask that went around the outside and I added the key light to basically remove the blue part of that image that I don't need. So I just want that image as basically a PNG. Then I, I dropped it here into my composition and you can use the Lumetri color here if you wanna make any sort of color adjustments to it. But then I can bring up the opacity for that layer and just scale this down. So it kind of looked a little bit interesting when I have it being slightly opaque. So I just kind of dragged that down to maybe around sort of 88 or something like that. And the other thing I did was I added sort of this, you know, animation of this, you know, mask growing out from the middle. So the way I did that was just go to my ellipse tool with that layer selected and holding shift, I just drew out a mask here, centered it somewhere on the map like that and I created a mask expansion, drag this right down, some like something like that, moved across on my, my timeline and scaled this up. 
And you can give this a little bit of a feather if you want as well, but I'm just gonna leave mine as a solid edge. And we kind of get that animation playing out like that. Now at the moment that looks really cool, but one other thing I wanted to do is also add some text in there. So I can grab my text tool up here and I can just draw out some text here. I can paste my text in and you can set your, you know, character settings over here to be whatever you like. And then you can kind of reposition your text somewhere in the middle of that map. Now, another little thing that I did with that is I basically wanted it to animate out with that mask. So what I did was I went up here and I used an interesting function called set matte. I talk about this in my animation master course. What I did was I added it to that layer over here and you need to set that to be the map layer underneath or the layer that you want to basically remove from that. And then what I can do is set it to be effects and masks. And now that's going to reveal that layer underneath essentially as that scales out. You can also set this to be the luminance and that's gonna allow you to kind of see through that text and, and makes it much more sort of interesting. Otherwise you can leave it as like the alpha channel if you just want it as a solid layer. And then basically that's all I really did for that map animation. What I then did was I wanted to animate this using a 3D camera. So what I did is I went back to my main composition here and I dragged in my map two, which sat on top. I can scale this down here, kind of line it up, go ahead a little bit here on the timeline so I can see how that's looking, something like that. The other thing I also did was I added a drop shadow and these are the settings up here that I used if you want to copy those and that kind of gives it that nice little, you know, dimension to this animation. And the other thing you can do is then make all of these 3D. If I hit P on the keyboard, I can move this forward in Z space and then scale this down. Now you won't see that until we right click and create a new camera. And you can set this to be like 35 millimeters or something like that. And if I go to that camera by hitting C, now I can see that dimension that we've created using that layer. The other thing you can do is if you grab all of these background layers, I can scale these right up just to kind of fill in the gaps there, maybe scale this down slightly. And I just, what I did here was basically started by creating a position and a point of interest keyframe. I can kind of zoom in here on the timeline, move across slightly so we can see what we're doing. Just drag these keyframes across because I want it to kind of start on this point down here. So maybe like bring it in like this, delete those second keyframes there. And then somewhere about here, I wanna drag these across and have this starting to, you know, animate out. So as I'm bringing the camera back, I can sort of scale this back to normal till I kind of fill that screen. And maybe when, I, when I'm in close like this, I can basically just rotate the camera very slightly. So I want a little bit of, you know, perspective on this thing. So something that looks like this. So we kind of get that, you know, nice little interesting movement. Something I can also do here is continue that movement a little bit. So keep the camera coming back, maybe move this up to kind of get that, you know, a little bit more movement in that thing. You know, really take advantage of that 3D space to make it much more interesting. Another thing with that camera is you wanna really try and smooth that whole animation out. So an easy way of doing that is select all those keyframes, go and make them easy ease. Also go down to the keyframe interpolation, make sure this is set to continuous Bezier, and then hit okay. Now when I go into the graph editor here and I drag up on these points, we can smooth out this animation. Again, if you wanna learn a lot about, you know, creating smooth camera movements, I go through that in detail in my animation master course. It's basically got all of this sort of stuff. I go through a lot more detail about how to really get, you know, smooth movements using that graph editor. But this is basically what we've got here. You can even just drag out a little bit here on the start of these, smooth that animation out slightly. And then we've kind of got that really nice animation. 
something like that. So that's pretty much what I did to create that effect. One other thing that I did was I added over the top this animation of this text sort of popping up here. So the way that I did that was I created these, you know, bars here. So I created a shape layer and I'm not gonna show you exactly how to create this from scratch, but basically I just created a yellow bar, which was a shape. And then I just typed a layer of text here. I've got another layer of text position here. And then I've got these little icons over here. Now, if you want lots of little icons and things, you know, which are really useful for these sort of animations, again, Envato Elements has just thousands of these sort of things. And this is what is really valuable with having an Envato Elements subscription and what I personally use it a lot for, because a lot of these elements would just take you hours to recreate from scratch. So I find that by using these, I can just drag and drop them straight into my project. I don't have to worry about licensing and I don't have to worry about whether they're gonna work for my project, because I can just pick the right ones for the project that I'm working on. What I also did with these two is I created basically, so this bar here is static, but these two I created position keyframes and just created a slight animation of them animating in like this, and then also added the motion blur over the top. So this kind of just adds another level of interest. Now what I can do with my main composition is I can drag that titles layer into my composition, and what I can do is also position it here behind my map layer. And you'll notice that as that layer is sort of popping up, I can off center this so that it is sort of popping up at the same time. If I also just make this 3D, it will also just animate up like this. If I scale this up and move it up here to the top of my screen, I can even just move it forward in 3D space to add a little bit more dimension to this. And now if I kind of get that positioning right, what I can also do here is add a little bit of scale. So I can just scale this down so these layers are sort of hidden in behind this and maybe even just drag this in slightly more so we have that animation sort of playing out, something like that. So now when I play through this animation, you can see that we have this thing fully complete. I can also add motion blur to this whole thing and we've got this animation playing out like that. The motion blur just kind of adds that another level of interest as it's zooming out kind of makes it much more interesting. One other thing you, you can see that I've done here is add these little dashes going across. That is really simple to do. And all you have to do is just basically draw a, a line which runs along on a new layer. Just draw like a straight line here. If I just turn off that layer underneath, you can come down to the content under shape, go down to stroke and you can add dashes by selecting this line. Make sure that you have a stroke selected here and that you can set your color of your stroke. You can even just drag down on the width of this and then just drag up on the dashes. You can have you know a larger gap or so forth. Then to duplicate that or to have the multiple layers, all you have to do is just come over here and add a repeater. Now the repeater allows you to basically have multiple copies. If I go down to the transform, I can offset this so that they stack one on top of the other. So I can basically drag this up to kind of get that. And then if you go back here to the offset, you can move this up and down to kind of get that positioning. So then all I did was I just basically, if I just turn on my original here, I just made this more transparent, so like 5%, and that's how I created those little lines and I added a bit of a opacity fade off. Again, I talk a lot about this in my Animation Master course. I go through a lot of detail about how to create all those little lines and create different animations using that same effect. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up a few different tips and techniques that you can use in your own videos. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you love this video, then you might consider subscribing. And you can also check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.